Separation of concerns is probably the most important concept when it comes to writing maintainable code. Unfortunately, not everyone applies this concept, and I'm sure some of you are using your ORMs wrong, and that is treating ORMs as the single source of truth for your database. What I mean by this is, let's say you have a user's route. I'm using Hono for this example, but this obviously applies to all backends. So here we have the basic CRUD operations, finding a user by ID, creating a user, we have updating a user, and finally deleting a user. We take in input, such as here when creating a user, we get the body, which uses sod under the hood, which is going to validate the JSON body. We call our database directly within our controllers, and then we return the user. Or, well, in the case of an error, we throw an HTTP exception. Now, this is fine, but the problem is that we're writing database queries within each one. This is problematic because most of the time, you'll be reusing the exact same queries, always returning the same data. For example, you do not want to expose the hashed password in the response. When you update a record, you usually send back the same information as when a client creates a record. So in this case, we're creating a user. So we have a post method here. And as we can see, we get from the new user, the ID, email and username, and then we return the new user. But if I scroll down and come here where I update a user, we're returning the ID, the email and the username. So why would you do this? Well, the idea is to allow the user to quickly receive the updated info and update the cache in the web application. This is so that the client can avoid performing another extra request to get the updated data. So you get all of these within a single request. However, sometimes you forget to select all the necessary data, or there are maybe side effects on your database procedures. For instance, when you delete a record, so we delete a user, you might also want to update another table automatically, or to synchronize with your Redis cache, or to add a rate limit, or to connect with another service. Maybe you call a Lambda, and it does something in the background. So now you're getting the gist of it. And that is, if you're going to do your database procedures within every single endpoint like this, you're going to have to reuse all of the logic by copying and pasting everywhere. If you change your logic in one place, you need to find every single occurrence and update each piece of code, which is completely unfeasible. So this is exactly what the repository pattern aims to resolve. In the repository pattern, like this one, we have a user's repository, you create separate components, which are these repository entities, and they handle the data access logic. So instead of scattering your database queries throughout the controllers and everywhere else, you encapsulate them within this appropriate repository. So here we have a get user by ID, we have a create user, we have update user and delete user. And as we can see, it is merely interacting with the database. This allows you to instead say await db dot delete from, etc. You simply say const deleted user is equal to await users repository dot delete user. And you pass in the information. And then if I comment this out, as we can see, the controller is no longer populated by the database interactions. All it does is call one single line of code. And this is great because let's say here, when you delete a user, so we have delete a user, you call a Lambda function or a microservice that is going to 
delete all the media stored in in S3, for example. So now whenever you call this method, this already encapsulates this logic. Previously, and this is something that I have seen a hundred times, people would literally copy this piece of code, so calling the lambda function or whatever, and pasting it every single time they delete something. And as your project grows, it will become impossible to synchronize everything and it will be full of bugs. So again, this is all about separation of concerns. So if you can modularize your code, break it up into smaller components, you can reuse them as much as you want with the huge benefit of maintainability. And you can also enforce your types here. So as we can see, we're returning the ID, email, and username for every single database operations. For this, all I did was create this type, which is actually the source of truth of the user. Because if I come here over to the original user type, which is actually here, this is code generated. As we can see, we have the updated ad, created ad, and we could potentially have password and other sensitive information. So by using the repository pattern, I was able to narrow down the user. And so I export the actual source of truth of the user because this is ultimately what we will be getting. And I also use this type for every single method. Obviously, this is a dummy project. This is not entirely representative of what you would see in the real world, because some database operations here might not return this at all. And that makes total sense. But as long as you enforce these patterns all throughout your code base, if in a year or two you have to revisit the code, it will be extremely easy to follow. Now you might have thought, hey, aren't you creating an ORM here? These are methods you already see in ORMs. Why are you providing an abstraction layer over what an ORM would do? And again, it's all about avoiding code duplication. So while it's true, we can simply use an ORM instead of Kiseli, like this one, which is going to be typed SQL. This is not an ORM. You could simply say prisma.user, delete, and then you pass in where, and that's it. And then deselect. So we're achieving the same as this method, right? But again, what if this deletion should have side effects? Now you get back to square one, which is adopting the repository pattern. Now a huge benefit of using the repository pattern is that you can isolate the unit tests. So here I have this users.repository.test file. And here I'm just using vtest and I'm testing against a mock database that all of these methods work. So we have a new user satisfies the create user body and then expect to be defined. And then we simply perform some basic comparisons. And since this is divided into components, so we have the repository component, the controller component. And if you use the service layer, you also have a service component. Testing becomes way easier, which is not something that you could do if you were not using the repository pattern. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.